Hey guys, it's Lane and Blake from Redefined Horizons, and what I wanted to do uh, today is make a couple of short videos um, to talk a little bit about uh, what happens to the surveying industry and kind of related industries, real estate industries in a recession. Uh, a lot of the young guys that I work with uh, have never been through a recession before. Uh, we had a pretty bad one back in 2008, and uh, we had a, another one in the early 2000s. Um, and so a lot of guys haven't been through a recession before, they don't really know what to expect. So I wanted to do a couple videos. This first video, I'm going to explain to you what typically happens to fees for surveying services in a recession. And I'm going to talk about uh, why the thing that everybody does in a recession uh, with their fees is not what you want to do, which is kind of counterintuitive. And I'm going to try and explain why that is. Uh, I'm going to do that in this first video. That is geared more towards guys that are a little higher level, kind of senior project manager or above. Uh, maybe guys that just that own a small business um, or that help manage a small business. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what happens to fees, um, why you don't want to chase fees to the bottom, um, why that that actually can can lead to a business default sooner than taking some other kind of counterintuitive steps. I talk about when you do layoffs, uh, there's another mistake that people make. Um, and so we'll talk about that. And then I want to do another video for the guys, kind of the more junior guys. Um, okay, it could be senior guys too, but uh, the more junior guys that are kind of sitting at home now, either on unemployment because uh, or, you know, because they've been laid off or terminated, or maybe they're just pinched. Um, they've still got a job, but they're waiting to go back to work. You know, what are some things you can do with your time over the next, I don't know, two to six months, maybe a year, depending on how long this lasts. Um, what can you do to put yourself in a good position for when the job market comes back? Because again, a lot of the people watching this video um, have never been through something like this, so they just don't know. Um, and recessions, um, even though they're difficult, uh, they do have some benefits. A part of that is disciplining the labor force. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of you guys um, that have never been in a tough labor market before and you're going you're gonna to learn some lessons uh, the hard way. So I want to try and make that as painless as possible for you and make sure that you're using your time uh, well here the next few months. So if you're, if you're kind of, if you're a junior level surveyor, land planner, JS guy or gal, uh, you're welcome to watch this first video if you want to understand a little bit more about how uh, the, the business cycle works and how it affects um, private businesses in the, in the serving industry. If you want to learn about that, you're welcome to watch this video and I encourage you to do that. Um, it, if, you're welcome to, if you're junior staff, you're welcome to skip this and just catch the, the next video I hope to do, which is going to talk a little bit more about what you can specifically do um, in, a, in a tough labor market, um, how you can prepare yourself for when, when things come back. Okay, so I want to talk about what happens to, to survey fees in a recession. And uh, let me say here at the start, uh, I'm going to try and keep this light, lighthearted and have a sense of humor. I realize this is a very serious time that we're in right now. Um, even though I've been through some recessions, the, the Great Recession in 2008 was no joke. Um, but I've, I've never seen anything quite like this where the where the economy has just come to a, a grinding halt like this. Um, and it's scary. It's scary for me. Um, and I know there's a lot of people suffering right now. So I don't want you to watch this video and, and think that I'm making fun of that. Uh, I'm not. I am going to try and keep a good sense of humor because I think that's important right now. Uh, you know, we will come out of this, uh, but there, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be painful. And I don't want to pretend that it isn't. You know, some guys are going to lose trucks, some guys are going to lose homes, some guys are going to lose businesses, um, and I'm not going to be immune to that. I'm worried. There's a possibility I might learn it. I might lose a truck. Um, you know, so yeah, it's, it's tough and it's scary. Um, so I want to acknowledge that right up front. I also want to acknowledge that, you know, some of the things we're going to talk about here, I, I don't want this video... I'm going to share some strong opinions with you, some strong business advice. 
I know these decisions aren't easy though. Um, and the right decision for one person isn't the right decision for another person or, or business owner. Um, so take my take my advice with a grain of salt. Your circumstances are different, but a lot of people have never been through this and they don't know what's going on. So I want to try and explain a little bit of what I've learned uh, just through personal experience and from my efforts to educate myself about uh, economics and business. So I've got a graph here. Let me explain this graph and then we'll talk about this orange line, which is important. So along the, uh, the bottom axis here, uh, we've got time. Okay, so we're moving forward in time that direction. And then on this vertical axis here, we have the fee, cost of the fee. S surveys don't really have a unit cost, but for the purposes of what we're going to teach you today, let's assume that we're talking about a standard in-town lot survey. Okay, so we need a we need a common unit to talk about. So, you know, I don't know. Let's just say those got a parcel the corners are in, it's on a record map. All you gotta do is go out there, you know, find the corners, check the adjoiner deeds, review tile report, fair the basic. Let's say you got guys that are doing that for five grand. Okay, or eight grand. You know, let's just uh let's just pick a number. Let's let's pretend we live in a world where most people are <laughs> getting paid a reasonable amount of money for their survey. So uh, let's just say that, uh, you know, if we're doing something that's really simple and close to our office, we're charging 6 k for that. We're gonna use in this example, okay? So <clears throat> we've got the cost of the typical fee for that survey over here on the left, time moving forward to the right. And let me explain what these other four lines are. So. This line right here, this green line, is where we like to be. We like to be above that line with our fee, okay? And that means we're covering our cost plus a little bit of profit. And I want to do some more videos about what does a survey cost, why does it cost that much, how do, how does, how do surveyors come up with their hourly rates, surveyors in private practice, what goes into those hourly rates, that's all good stuff um, that I can teach you guys um, that, I, that I essentially had to teach myself. I got taught a little bit, about, a little bit of that from my friend Kevin. Uh, Kevin Janacy, but a lot of it I had to learn on my own. So this green line is where we want to be. We want our fee to be above this, so cost and a little bit of profit. You know, typically in the surveying industry, you're somewhere between 5 and 25% on your profit. It just depends on the type of business you are and the market you're in. Okay? So we got cost plus, let's just call it 15% here, the green line. Okay? Then you've got actual cost, so you're not covering any profit here. That's the purple line. And then we have bald, what I call the bald tire cost, which is the red line, okay? And I'm gonna come back, we'll talk about these two lines here and how they're different. And then over here we have this line in time where at some point we're gonna reach, we're gonna get, we're gonna get to a, we will get to a point in time when, when survey companies start going bankrupt. Okay, and I wanna talk about why that happens. Let me hand sanitize since I touched my face. We're, in the middle of a virus outbreak. All right, so <clears throat> let's talk about the difference between these two lines down below. So we have the actual cost and the ball, what I call a ball tire cost. <laughs> and I'll explain why I call it that. So actual cost means you're covering your wages plus all your overhead costs, okay? And there's a lot of overhead costs that go into running a business. So you've got your building rent, your building utilities, your business insurance, your professional liability insurance, um, you got health insurance for your workers, workman's comp insurance, payroll taxes, uh, you're paying the secretary, you're paying people when they're not billable, um, you know, you, you might be paying a marketing gal, or like in my business, I pay an accountant, tax accountant, and I also have a human resources consultant and I have an IT consultant, so all those people gotta get paid. So, as a general rule, uh, just throw it, you know, these are just general, you know, you, you basically can split those into thirds, okay? So you've got your, uh, this is what we call uh, direct labor, that's essentially your wages or your payroll, okay? And then you've got your overhead here, and then you've got, you know, your profit. So when you look at your hourly rate, it's generally a third, a third, and a third, and we'll do some more videos on this, but most surveyors don't quite get 30% profit, but it, it's a rough breakdown, okay? So, 
when you're at the purple line, you're covering your, you know, let's just call it a, somewhere between two thirds and three quarters of your regular billing rate. So you've knocked off the 25% or the 15% profit and you're, you're getting two to three quarters of your billing rate. Okay, so you're, you're covering your wages and your overhead at the purple line. Okay, now let's talk about this red line. It's what I call ball tire cost. You have the ability for a short period of time to actually charge fees that are le less than what's covering your actual cost. How do guys do that? Well, here's what they do. Uh, they run on ball tires. That's why I call it the ball tire cost, right? So you, you push off maintenance. Um, you need, you're not invested in software equipment or training. Uh, maybe guys let their insurance lap, so they're running without auto insurance, or they let their professional liability insurance coverage last, lapse. Um, you know, some guys pay ahead for, for their bills, you know, so they paid ahead for a year on some of their insurance or their building lease. And so instead of setting aside money monthly for that so they can pay the next year, they just, they, they start burning out that wiggle room they've got by paying those, because they previously paid those bills ahead. So there's some things you can do as a business owner, kind of move money around. Essentially what you're doing is you're pushing bills off into the future, right? At some point you're gonna, those bald tires are gonna blow and you're gonna have to replace tires and now you might have to re actually replace damage on a truck. So this, this is dangerous living here when you get into the bald tire cost. Uh, once you get below that purple line, uh, you're in trouble whether you realize it or not. And essentially what you, once you go, once your fees go below the purple line, uh, you're on borrowed time and uh, you could be setting yourself up for a disaster. So let's look at this orange line and let's talk about kind of where I think we're at in the business cycle and what's about to happen. Okay, so right now, let's not say right now, let's go back four weeks, okay? So four weeks, four weeks ago we were about right here. Okay, we were well above the green line with our fee, typical fee. And when I say we, I mean the industry, not just my business, okay? Uh, we had people that, we frequently talked to people here uh, at my business in Central California uh, that could not get a surveyor to call them back. Everybody was too busy. So that's about where we were four weeks ago. Okay, here's where I think we are right now. So today is March 30th. And uh, we've started to see this downhill slide. I've seen it just in the last week or two. Okay, I've lost some work. Guys are dropping their fees. Um, I've talked to some other surveyors. People are having projects uh, stopped, frozen, pulled back. There's gonna be a lot of people with unpaid bills that aren't getting paid. Okay, so what's about to happen is, uh, and, I, and you know, I would say what this is over the next 60 days maybe, is uh, the price of the pr typical the fee for the typical survey is going to plummet. And I, I know there's no such thing as a typical survey, but in this imaginary world that we're talking about, because it, it helps illustrate the concept, but fees are going to plummet. Uh, and when I say plummet, uh, how, by how much? A lot. Uh, fees are going to plummet a lot. So let's talk about how much I think they're going to plummet. You know, right here, uh, let's just say we've got a 20% of profit. And again, I think that's high, but Let's just say we got 20% profit. Okay, then we got another, let's say 30% of overhead here. Okay. These fees are gonna drop 50% in the next 60 days. At, at least. Now here's what happens. So that's the steep part of this graph. I mean they are gonna just fees are just gonna just drop. So if you're waiting to buy a survey, you need, you know, if you can wait four weeks, wait four weeks. Feet, they're gonna go off a cliff. Okay, now here's what happens. They're gonna, guys are gonna, or gals. Uh, they're going to dive right past that purple line because people are going to get desperate and they're going to be scared. You know, we're talking about guys that might be losing a house. They're going to go right past this purple line and they're just, that price is going to keep plunging. Now what happens is as you approach the bald tired cost, um, there starts to be some upward pressure, not upward pressure, but resistance on dropping that price any farther. Because when you get below bald tire cost, um, guys can't even cover their, putting fuel in their truck and the, and the labor for the day. Okay. Now, 
So as we approach the bald tire cost, this steepness of this drop will, will start to flatten. It's not going to stop. It'll, it'll keep going down, but it will flatten. Okay. Now, I don't have a crystal ball. How far away do I think we are from here? You know, I think we're maybe two months from the point where the fee crosses the bald tire cost. Let's say uh, right here, let's say we're 30 days away from the point where fees cross below the actual cost to do the work. Okay. This is just estimates. Now you might ask yourself, now, as I told you, the, the fee there, the orange line, typical fee, it's not going to stop going down when we hit the ball tire cost line. It's going to keep going down. It's not going to go down as fast, but it will go down, and it'll stay down under this line for a while. So how is that possible? How can you have the fee of a survey go below ball tire cost? Uh, well, people start to rob Peter to pay Paul here. So they're living on credit cards. Um, you know, guys like me that own a business are working for free if they're not already. So they're not getting paid. Um, and you can do that for a little while. So this line's going to stay under now. <clears throat> this little stretch of the curve right here um, <laughs> I'm trying to think of what I want to call that let's call this the pit so there's going to be a length of time here where fees going to, the fee for a survey is going to be below the actual cost below the ball tire cost sorry okay we're going to call that the pit we're going to be in the pit for a while and it's basically going to be impossible to make money as a land surveyor in this area, in this time period. Now here's what happens when you're in the pit for long enough. Anytime the orange line is below the purple, uh, you have companies that are at risk of bankruptcy. And the longer you're under that purple line, the more companies are going to go bankrupt. And the speed at which companies go bankrupt um, depends on a lot of different things. It depends on how much debt they, they're already carrying, how much money they have saved. Uh, how lean of an operation they have, what kind of market they're in. Uh, but I would say, you know, we're going to hit this red line over here, the bankruptcy line, before the end of the year. There's going to be a lot of firms that are going bankrupt. You know, one of the other things, um, you know, there's a lot of guys now, because uh, there's not a lot of there's not a lot of surveyors my age, licensed surveyors. Yeah, you know, there's guys, a lot of guys that are going to look around. They're not going to have anybody that's set up to take over the business, and uh, they're just going to pull the plug on this, guys. They're gonna just gonna get out of the surveying business, maybe retire, um, because this is not gonna be fun. You know, being down here in the pit's not fun. So that's what's gonna happen with survey fees. Uh, I think over the next six to nine months. You know, I'm hoping you, you don't climb out as fast as you go down, but uh, you know, hopefully by the end of the year we'll be past this bankruptcy line and uh, we'll start coming out. We'll start coming out of the hole. Okay. So, let's talk about what everybody does when this when this crash starts to happen. Okay, so when the crash and survey fee starts to happen, because what people do is they race, they everybody races to get down here and below this red line. And so I want to tell you uh, part of how that happens. And um, you know, uh, we've had some conversations here at Refined Horizons about. Do we cut wages? Uh, do we lay people off? Do we, uh, you know, do we cut our fees? Um, and I have some very strong opinions about the right thing to do there and the wrong thing to do there. And so I want to tell you what most people do, and then I'm going to tell you what I'm, we're going to try and do here, and uh, we'll see how this works out. Like I said, we've never really seen anything like this, but so I'm going to just draw a typical work week up here. And then I'm going to explain part of how we end up below ball tire cost. And then I'm going to tell you what I think you should do, which is counterintuitive. So let's just say right now, let's go back four weeks. So four weeks ago, you know, most surveyors were working five days a week. Some surveyors were work, working more than that, but. Let's just say you were working five. You were working five days a week. So I'm going to give you three scenarios here. 
Okay, and let's just say your take, let's say your small firm, your two to four person firm. So let's just say that you're you're billing ten grand a ten grand a week. Okay. Here's what most guys are gonna do. They're gonna cut their fees. And they're gonna cut their fees. And they're gonna cut their fees some more. And then the guy down the street's gonna cut his fees and then you're gonna cut your fees again. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna be working six days a week. Okay, but instead of making ten thousand dollars, you know we said fees could easily drop fifty percent. Now you're making five thousand dollars. Okay, and it might not even be that much. Uh, but let's just say it's five grand. I'm gonna be generous. Okay. So you put in the same amount of more hours for half the money. Now here's what, and then everybody does that because that their people are scared and it seems like the smart thing to do. We're just gonna gut our fee, and uh, we you know we'll just we'll try and hang on to half as much work as we've been getting. Um, you know that's what everybody wants to do because they're scared. Um, but I, hopefully you can understand from the other graph that's not sustainable. Right. Uh, that is a quick route to bankruptcy for most businesses. So here's here's an alternative that I'm going to encourage people to think about. Don't cut your fees in half. Uh, now I'm not saying you don't have to sharpen your pencil a little bit. And maybe you get rid of your profit. And maybe you cut your fees 20% so that you're just covering your actual cost, that purple line in the graph before. And here's what I want you to do. Shorten your work week. So maybe you're only working Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, okay? And I want you to do something else besides serving with these other three days a week. Okay, now you might be saying, well, what, what else am I going to do? Well, so there's some things you can think about, right? If you've got the savings, um, you can use these three days a week to invest in your skills or in your, in your team skills or in your organization's capabilities. There's different things you can do. You know, learn about GIS, learn about UAVs, um, you know, learn about land title, learn about land appraisal, um, do some volunteer work. You know, there, uh, there are things that you can do here to improve yourself and your organization, okay? And like, here's the crazy thing. You're going to cut your fees 20%. You're going to only work for your best clients, right? And you know what? You're going to make the same money that you would up here if you cut your fees in half. Only now you've picked up this three days a week. Okay? Maybe you learn to code. You know, you learn some Python or some C Sharp or you do some 3D modeling and SketchUp. There's all kinds of productive things you can do with your time on that other three days. Okay, even, here, here's something better than cutting your fees in half. Okay? Even if you have no imagination and you can't think of anything you can do here to either invest in yourself or your skills or to generate a little more revenue. There will be some jobs out there. Go get a job, part-time job, right? I used to be in the grocery business. There's a good chance this next nine months I might go get a job part-time in the grocery business, right? Let's just say I can get a job for 25 bucks an hour. That's not unreasonable where I live in California. Man, with my experience, and now I'm getting $25 an hour, let's say for 18 hours a week, three six hour shifts, right? I'm probably still better off financially than I am in this scenario here, right? And the problem is when you start cutting your fees 50%, you're gonna be cutting corners, you're not gonna be as careful, um, you're increasing your liability, you know, you're running on ball tires, uh, you maybe you're, you're doing surveying without professional liability insurance, Man, you're better off to just go get that job at Save Mart or Rayleigh's. You know, do something else with this three days a week. You know, and I've got some things that we're going to try here. We're going to run some experience here, some experiments. We've got a little bit of time. You know, we're going to shorten up our survey work week. Um, and then we're going to try and do some different things here. This is what we're not going to do, though. I'm not going to cut my fees 50 or 60%. Because um, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a path to bankruptcy. Okay, so I hope that video helps. Uh, I'm going to take a little break here, and then uh, when I come back, 
I'm going to talk about some things younger guys can do or gals can do to, uh, you know, prepare for the what's going to happen in the job market, um, and to, to you know be prepared to uh, be prepared for when the job market comes back. Okay, so thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it.